evacuation procedure in the event of a fire alarm, fire drill, or other emergency signal by the continuous sounding of the bell. Please exit from the room by the exit doors indicated. <laughs> and assemble at the meeting point in the car park. You have never thought of your career in there, is this? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's good to be a good one as well. Um, right. Filming, recording a meeting in line with the openness of local government bodies, regulation 2014. Well, this meeting may well be filmed, recorded by the town council, members of the public. So, does any members of the public object to that? Then? Okay. Okay. Maybe just wait. Right, okay, submission for the public 15 minutes. Um, the meeting is formally now adjourned. This item, residents of Frank Stowe wishing to make a statement or ask a question required to give a name and address before making a statement or asking a question. A maximum of five minutes per person is allowed within the overall limit of 15 minutes. And there will be no opportunity later in the meeting for the public to speak. And John is actually not a Bradley Stoke resident, but he's come here to talk about a Bradley Stoke matter which actually affects him and other people. So, thank you, John. Thank you. Um, I come down this evening just to talk a little bit over the car park, and generally they're doing a good job. That's that's not you know not, they're a bit noisy. They swear, and we got loud radios, but that's the normal building site. Just the one up there. No, this one boy. Yeah, it probably is up there actually. Brookway. Um, yeah. I I have been keeping an eye on it, like you know I'm known to do, and this evening I went over and had a look, and as far as I'm concerned, they positioned the car park incorrectly. They've drawn the line from the edge of the, the tennis courts and marked out 10 spaces where all the plans, if I don't know if you've got them, shows them as a carry-on from the spaces already there. Normal spacing for five is 12 meters, so you would expect 24 meters. Now, already from the edge of the curves, they're 27 meters in, plus the park between the edge of the tennis court and the original car park. So the position is definitely wrong. You can count the curves, you can do it whichever way you want. I got a laser measure, so I go, it's wrong. And I went back to the scale ruler, and all I'm asking you to do is, they're not in a position that they can alter it. They can alter it dead easy. They have put the corner, corner of the curves in, and all they gotta do is reposition them, measure it from the original car park. 
and then it's according to the plans laid out. Um, and I hope you have a commitment that you will look at this for me tomorrow because I don't really want to get into involved in planning control and everything else and everybody getting involved where it's just a simple mistake of the, of the contractors they me measured from the wrong position. So that's my first concern. The second concern is, and it's only came to light yesterday, I've been trying to get a copy of the plan for um, the planting scheme and I haven't been able to challenge it because obviously it's already gone through but it's, it's taken me all this time to get to um, a scheme that I can actually read and on it it shows beech trees which are obviously deciduous and they're put there to stop the lights coming through. Again, it's not going to do the job. Um, you need to revisit it, maybe thicken them up by a different type, maybe put um, some red robins in amongst them or some red robins at the end of the car park and I think with very little investment from the council you could stop the problems and it's, it's only going to create a moan for the people on the common um, and it's easily appeased by just a little bit of thought with the, um, the contractors at this position. Um, the other part I got is the lighting. Um, it says, John Randall said, we, we're not going to put any additional lighting in and on this plan it's a play of words. You're moving one light and reposition it in the new car park. Um, I consider that additional lighting. The problem being, if you move the light that you've got there, it's a 360 light, and if you stand in our front room now, it's bright. Just by changing the head on it and get the, the light to go downwards, it's not going to be a problem, and then you've got your lights in. So there are my, my main concerns, is the, the planting scheme is going to cause a problem because the light's going to come through, because when you want the leaves on the trees, they're not going to be there. And it's always going to be dark, so we're going to get light. So we're, you know, it's not only I'm going to protect my my wife because she got MS and she is already a proven person that is vulnerable to light. And we got next gen one next door to us got cataracts, and then we got more old people. And all they're going to do is come to me and moan that we've got a problem. So just by putting evergreens there, the problem will go away. So there's there's my my moan. Um, I hope the council will take it board and reposition the, the car park in the correct position. Um, the lighting alter the head on the, the lamp because the other thing with putting lights down there, it's like when you put lights you get moths, but in our area it's not moths. It's antisocial behavior. You probably don't know that we've had prostitution down the end of the common that we've had to deal with and it's all come about because of the light at the end of the common. And we're always going down picking up those lovely little containers. And, if it starts over there and they've got lights over there, you can guarantee, it'd be nice to have a time light that goes out at 11 o'clock, that you're going to get them in your uh, area, not mine. So, you know, just with a little bit of thought, I, can, I think we can make all these problems go away and everybody would be happy. So I, I put the council through your thoughts. Thank you, thank you, John. I appreciate you coming. Um, in respect of where the car park's positioned, we'll find we'll definitely look at that tomorrow. Yeah. Because John Rendell is, goes down every day in the agency. Mm. It, it's, it's, it, yeah. You can just see it. If you if you look at it, you know where they've measured it from, the edge of the tennis courts. And if you look at the drawing, it's supposed to be measured from the edge of the old car park. And what they've done is missed that part out and moved it inwards. Um, and you, it's, you, you know, it's, it's 12, 12 metres per five, and I'm measuring with the Harris fence in, 27, 28 metres, and I've got land behind me, so I know it's, it's not in the right place. So thank you very much for that, Clara. Yeah, we'll do that one. Um, in respect of the um, hedge, mm -hmm. um, John has been in contact with the contractors today, and we're definitely going to look at putting other trees in between the beach hedging. Perfect. Evergreens. Um, yeah. The contractors have also suggested that what they could do is put the board at the back of the trees for the first year and the trees get Even established. Even better. Would that be something which... Oh, it'd be excellent. Would... Yeah, if, if you could put, you know, red robins behind the board when you do that, the red robins would be there. They'll be this big in 18 months and all the problems are just going to disappear. It's going to make a lovely noise break as well. 
Mm. Yeah, laurel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Portuguese laurel or normal laurel. Yeah. Portuguese is better to look at because it flowers, it looks prettier. Um, normal, the other laurel, laurel takes a lot of work to keep it in hand. And the car parking light, we will look into that. Obviously, we do need some lighting yeah. there because we, we want to curtail the idea of antisocial behaviour mm. in the depths of the car park. Yeah. Um, but we will look at that and um, the suggestion is we could put shield on the back of the light to stop it shining. I, I think, you know, we've done a similar sort of thing up in, in Patchway and it's, we changed the lighting for this new LED that points downwards. Mm -hmm. And the effect was absolutely fantastic. It wasn't a lot of money, but one light would probably cover the whole car park. And because it's so directional now, it's just going to be in the car park, which will help to stop antisocial behaviour being outside of the car park. So you know, they're not expensive, these directional LEDs. And, you know, if you could look at making it timed, it would probably help because we get the antisocial behaviour usually after you've closed the gates. Um, which works very well that you've closed the gates all these years and it's made a lot of difference down there but we start to get the problem when the gates are closed for some unknown reason so if it is a time light in that position I think it would stop a lot of antisocial behaviour in the car park and if it's 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock when everybody's finished using the community centre because obviously this is going to encourage more use of the community centre now you've got a car park in it'd be much appreciated again well, um, Thank you, John. Thank you, <coughs> Sharon. What I have noticed myself from the plan uh, was that the lighting, the, the new light, or the <coughs> moved light, is actually to the side of the car park. It's not to the back of the car park. No, it's to the side of the car park. And, yeah. you know, whether or not that could be moved to the back of the car park, because that would then give you a really good distribution of light right the way across and down through, uh, and enhance light you've already got. But if you put it on the side, then it may be difficult to screen it from uh, from the other area, so it's so just a thought. But I would have thought putting the car, putting the light at the back of the car park would actually put it, it much closer to the houses, yeah. wouldn't it? So it, if, it? Yeah, possibly, yeah. Yeah, Lee. yeah um, she was saying about antisocial behaviour, yeah. uh, is the thought of having CCTV cameras there, mm. and, but we need that, that section as well, not sort of. Well, I think that would be something to be assessed yeah. as time goes on and see whether there is anything. Yeah. I think it would be sensible to... Yeah. And obviously, we'll keep the situation under review anyway, we yeah. would do, because we're obviously aware that there are neighbouring properties on the common. So. Yeah, you'd have to be careful with that, because you wouldn't want it to, to encroach those houses there. It'd have to be so that it goes inward as if it's going towards... The, the yeah, we'll assess that as time goes on. I agree with the name, I think that would be really sensible because if we're increasing the size of the car park, we haven't got that coverage no. for the CCTV there. That would be absolutely sensible to extend it because otherwise, rather than sort of fighting far later, we've already sort of solved the problem once we do that. So. <coughs> Sorry, John. Yeah, you still no, have to <laughs> I, I, I would support Brian what he said. If you if you put a directional LED towards our property, we wouldn't get no light spill from it at all. No, because it, it goes down. It goes down, yeah. and it would give good light because we've been dealing with these lights all the way to the community centre for security for people using it. I think it should be looked at anyway. Yeah, it, uh, it's only you know I would support that because yeah, yeah. before it's put in, you know anything yeah. it makes things safer, and obviously it'd be directional away from us, but we wouldn't even see it. Because the roads have got all those LEDs there as well. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. Uh, colleagues, um, <clears throat> I, I'm not sure of the, um, the time frame for this, but work is being done at the moment. So it could well be that it may be very, very quick and rapid by the time they put in lighting or whatever or move this light, and it would be then expe more expensive to do it. So I think um, it, it's really important that you know, John has a look at this tomorrow, I think, and see, see what he can do. And, and I think and it's just a case of changing yeah. the head. That, that, that once the lighting column is yeah. in position, you just change the head, that's not the problem. Yeah. Uh, and I'd also like to say that I'm very grateful to Sharon and John Rendell for looking at this problem because in the background, I mean, this, this you know, John actually raised this problem uh, or this possible, you know, you know, and solutions to it um, just earlier in the week. Uh, and I must admit, you know, even on planning, you know, I go into the planning application the site, look at the plans, can't read them. So I asked Sharon to send me a, a plan 
and she said we'd found she had, could read it. So I then contacted the officer at my couple, Sharon, and Sharon kindly sent me the plan that John had, John Rendell, because mm. he could read, because obviously someone here has got to read it, read yeah. it yeah. and we could then read it. So, I'd uh, sent you the, the one, yeah. a different one to the one that John had, but John wasn't in the office when I sent you that. Ah, right, so you found another one, yeah, brilliant, because we could read it, read it, but we just couldn't read it. So there's documentation on the on Circle's website, which is supposed to be there for the general public, and nobody could read it. Keith? Right, and all I'm going to say is, as you know, there was a motion last week that the planning process is reviewed as soon as possible. Oh yeah, definitely. And yeah, I yeah, think yeah. that will solve that issue. Yeah. As well, soon as possible. Well, actually, Bring it on. Yeah. yeah, well, I think, I think the motion is slightly different than that. But, was, no, I think, uh, the thing is, there is a process, I think it's um, November, December, uh, there will be a, a review of the planning process in place in South Austria at the moment, and um, local councils and people will be able to uh, come in on that. And myself and Keith are very unhappy the way it is. Uh, Keith is really unhappy about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> right, okay. Let's move on then. Uh, are you okay on that? Yep. Yeah, thank you very much. That's, no, it's, it's answered all the questions and it will cause no problems in the future. If, yeah. you know, yeah. with, with the boarding going up, the different hedging, the light, think, the positioning of it, yeah. you know, I can't ask for more really. I think that's brilliant. I think that's yeah, really you, you know, well, really you know, thank you very much for your attention yeah. on it. It's, yeah. it's very much appreciated because it's going to save a lot of problems in the future. And I can go back and report to everybody, and they're going, oh, that's all right, then they don't, well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, yeah, yeah. Well, thanks very much. It. No, it's really good of you. Best really wishes to your wife, John. Mm, thank you. Right, okay. Um, do you receive any apologies for absence? Yes, Tom Aditya and Terry Cullen. Okay. Um, declaration by members under the Local Government Act, 1972. Have you got any declarations to tell me? Or... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Right, uh, thanks for the chair. I have thought of something, but uh, I've forgotten it. So uh, we don't worry about that. <laughs> Shall we go? Moving on. <laughs> um, Confirm the minutes of the meeting on the 25th of September 2019 as a correct record. Yeah, I've got those. That's great. I've read it all there. Have you been okay with that? Yeah, yes, I've seconded. Okay, that's fine. My ad writer here. Can we vote on that, please? 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 to note the outcome of previous planning applications. No, number six. Oh, number six. No, I always say that one. They're on one, but... I don't know what that is. It's always number six. Right, considering matters arising from the minutes of the meeting on 25th of September are not covered elsewhere on the agenda. No, no. To note the outcome of the previous planning applications and other documents pertaining to planning and environmental issues. Do you have that tabled in front of you? Two decisions, one of which agreed with us, and the other one 
which is quite a rarity. We, we said yes, and the task force said no. Hmm. Which is the 43 Percy Drive. They said no because the proposed direction of the first floor side extension, by reason of its size and scale, if allowed, would be detrimentally overbearing in the outlook and living conditions of the neighbouring dwelling house. 42 Percy Drive, resulting in significant harm to residential amenities. Mm. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, it's very yeah, interesting. Yeah, you've had loads of others, yeah. especially there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that one was only... Yeah. They've agreed to yeah, us, right? I can think of tons. I can. Yeah, yeah big one, yeah. Well, you yeah. remember that for the future. And quote it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, that one diary somewhere. Yeah. That's... Yeah. Well, sooner the final process is not going to be better, that's all I can say. Can we look at the planning process? This is not to be done with a reason by the central government. South Gloss is. Yes, but isn't South Gloss is, uh, doesn't South Gloucestershire have to work in accordance with guidelines or rules laid down by central government? No, they, no. they change their own. Hmm. Uh, there's things that aren't right, isn't there? <coughs> I think from a policy point of view they do, but how they actually run right. their, their planning department. It's interpretation rather than fact. Right. The city authorities in this area do things differently, I think. Guidelines yeah. are slightly different. I mean, if they've, they've got certain things which they've got to um, try and do, which look like it's coming from somewhere else, like the environment and uh, flooding, for instance. But, you know, if you, if you, can't, you, know, if you look at the planning application, who's in the flood zone 3 or 3A three area or whatever, quite often the environment agency you don't write back. Yeah. Because in reality, it's down to the planning authority to ensure that residents are safe, and that's the way that it works. So, so they then have got their own set of wording, which officers have got to work with, and um, and then you know, it, it's like that right the way through. And and it's different officers, so they've got their own balance on things that they think about. So you could have a different officer say something completely different about that property, um, which is why we're here, hopefully to look at it and if we've got objection, we should bring it through. <coughs> it's just another set of eyes really. So 20 eyes rather than uh, two. Mm -hmm. Okay, next. To prepare responses from the proper authorities regarding planning applications relating to private state. You have that in your agenda pack and there's no, no more extras apart from the five that are... <laughs> Not the most attractive extension. Yeah. It looks like the top pebble question. If Keith's yeah. moving that, I'll second it. No problem. Is that no objection? Yes. Could be choice, but we'll look at it somewhere. We think it's like that exact dimension. You'd you think you'd want to be a bit more adventurous there, wouldn't you? Yeah. So Keith proposed. So he's got a decent roof on it or something. Yeah. 
So it's basically changing it's a, a flat roof, glass yeah. box into a concrete box. Yeah. yeah. Pitch roof, I would like to pitch there. there. Mm. It would. There's room to do it too. Yeah. Mm. So, you can keep the pose no objection, Michael no. seconded. No, more than that, it's a joke. <laughs> 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 Should we take a vote on that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Somebody used to put up on the back of the corner shop prefabricated houses. <laughs> Very much. You're happy with jelly on the back of it, so yeah. Mm -hmm. First one. Bear with me a minute. I don't think there was any more sex in the book. Yeah, no, not to really see that. I've got that's really first back. Do you want to pretend I'm born now? Right, the next one is display of two internally illuminated facial signs and one internally internally illuminated hanging sign at Birch House Brotherwood Court, Great Park Road. ensure the integrity of the building is preserved, a building whose origins date back to the 17th century. Therefore, along with the local list, SPD, being of relevance, I would also refer you to Council's adopted SPD on advertisements. As proposed, the scale of the signage to the facade needs to be reduced in the interest of the classical proportions of the elevation, along with reducing in height to give more space between the head of the ground floor and the sill of the first, it may be that another sign could be placed on the other side of the elevation to help balance it out. The sign should also not be internally illuminated and fabricated from timber as opposed to aluminium, again picking up on the guidance contained within the adopted SPD. As proposed, the signage would fail to sustain or enhance the significance of this non-designated heritage asset, contrary to the relevant policies for heritage assets, and the SPDs for both the localists and the advertisements. Mm. So they have. I can't believe all of that. The no. applicant has. Yeah. Uh, and they specified, Karen, not internally illuminated? They did say that. Yeah. And, See, and that's this, what they're asking for, so yeah. how can we do it? This has um, come in, I think this, this is the revised elevation. Mm, yeah, so they obviously that that one was yeah. very huge. This one is much smaller. I must admit I haven't but it's still there. Um, it's it going to double it? Double it the size of the room, right? Front. That's extra. Is it not to drill in? It still says down here about aluminium. Uh, but they think it should have been wood, or they think it should have been aluminium. No, they're saying it's wood. It's not wood. Yeah. Um, um, the sign should also not be turned yeah, so internally illuminated so. and fabricated from timber as opposed to aluminium. Right, so it should be wood. Should be wood, yeah. yeah. 
Because wouldn't the key in the key for the building? Yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. You keep on the building as opposed to some monstrosity mm -hmm. that would look okay on a Willowbrook's end of it, not necessarily on a listed building. I think the officer makes a really good point though about it balancing out with a yeah. sign on the other side. Mm -hmm. I agree. It's interesting, isn't it? Him saying he wants more signs and not less signs. But he's, he said more though for the lesser, lesser sign. Yeah. It's like lesser of a sign to balance out. Yeah. And he's trying to get symmetry between the windows, and you won't achieve that if you don't have another sign on the other side. Yeah. But it's that uh, ruin of front on it. It's a lovely building. The front is absolutely lovely. Hey, if you're going to have two sides on it, it's going to It can be done tastefully. If it's tastefully constructed, as we said, out of timber, with a subform vector, you wouldn't say that you should have a sign external to the building with a signpost saying coffee there or something. It's, quite, it's going to ruin the building. Yeah. It's but going to ruin it. If you think about like older public houses, they okay. do have all signs. Those signs would be things like wooden signs when you look at them. But why can't they have one like they've got the old pubs where they've got like um, a post and they have. Yeah, but most of on. So you do have things like that, like that one that's sign there. Yeah, they've got the sticky out one on the side. Um, but it does say down here that. Oh, my goodness, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> why am I? The nurse star. Just tap off it. Like right, the Mickey Mouse one. Tap there, yeah. Right, sorry about that. Um, it does say down here that the section AA, which is this sign here, yeah. Yeah. isn't no illumination. So they have taken that on board. But it's constructed from aluminium. But it is still constructed from aluminium. This one says halo illumination from low energy. So that is the, the one, on the one that's on the side of the building. And this one is the sticky out one. I just think it needs to be on a post like the pubs. That's got, got that's the sign on that as well. And just leave the building alone. That's an illuminated top and bottom and even That's what I think it should be like. Yeah, I think we should uh, send a little note through saying we're very grateful the conservation officer has taken a lot of trouble to do this yeah. and to, to come up with these suggestions. Um, because you know we've got very few of these buildings. You know, that's the listed building, um, and um, that we feel that uh, it should have not a sign attached to the building, but there should be um, a sign elsewhere pointing to the building. Yeah, it's, it's all sort of like um, you've got a post, and then you've yeah. got like um, King Charles Park, yeah, that's attached off the off that post, yeah, something like that. Where yeah, it's I think not so. touch yeah, it. yeah. And, 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 we, and we wouldn't we wouldn't be concerned about having a reasonable size sign. Pointing to to the building, yeah. but you, know. you can't. So I would be in favour of. So I would I would like to, I would propose um, rejection of what's put forward, based on the comments from the officer. So I don't have anything against like having signs on the building as such. I would just like to see the advice adop adopted into this plan. I don't I don't I don't want to say mm -hmm. don't it's like we have the building. We have the white horse, which was a listed building. And we had timber signs, sign written timber signs, mm. which were in keeping with the age of the building. Mm. So I yeah, and I, I don't I don't think signature can't be on the building is any different to any pub which has been around in 1600 having a sign in front of it. It's a big difference because in fact, sort of effectively a building which wasn't a pub. If you've got a building which that is a pub, pub, which then comes up for listing, then it can be listed. This is not a pub oh. as such. This is a building and, and it's got a listing on it and, and, and that was listed, it was listed to make sure it could get taken apart yeah. by the builders and they had to preserve it and they used it as offices when they were building Crowley Stoke uh, so yeah, that's, that's basically what happened and they were able to preserve it so mm. uh, I can understand Elaine's comment it may not be that if we put anything on there saying um, you know an external sign pointing to coffee or whatever it may be that the officer may decide to, to do something different. I think he, he has been very good. Um, most of the time, the conservation officer is not listened to on so far as the planners. That is more often the case. Um, so, but he's employed to try and do a good job. And uh, I think you know, we should give him some, our support. And I, I agree with Ben. At the end of the day, we should you know, congratulate him or whatever. Yeah. Um, but I, I do feel that, you know, down to this committee to determine what happens. We've got one proposal. So the objection on the grounds that the locally listed building should be preserved. Yeah. And 
as it is, is without without uh, affixing signs to it. Well, like what? what, what, what same thing and then it went through the gray page. Yeah, yeah, it's different because Objection. it's got a four bone fixed release. Yeah. Okay. But if it hasn't, yeah. it's, it's, it's just going to ruin. Each of the buildings this big. Building to this point. Point. Smaller signs, yeah. yeah. signs yeah. that we've got in. Yeah. Yeah. Then yeah. The I agree with you. I'll second that. I mean, this particular one. I don't say something. No. 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 I think we should yeah. put a suggestion like, or sign. something. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah, sort of back of remote signing. Yeah. With remote you mind could sign it. Yeah. It's like that little corner there. Not where it's sound like right. it's on the robot. I know, I was trying to think of a better word for it. With, um, <laughs> with standalone signage. Yeah, yeah that word is free standing. Free free standing. Free well, not freestanding, it could go on a post, couldn't it? Like, yeah. like, like a pub swing and pub sign kind of thing. So mm. with standalone yeah. signage. I mean, what is interesting about this, it's not actually on the main road where lots of people are going past. This, is, this becomes known by the local people, oh, it's called the place down the road, etc. And I think as long as it's got a sign directing people to it, once you've actually found that location, you see yeah. it. Um, so... Okay. Well, the office work, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. objection on grounds that the locally listed building should be preserved as it is without fixing signs to the building itself, with, a sta with standalone signage, not... So just want you to call him, please. <laughs> so Elaine um, Andy seconded. So can you take a vote on that, please? One, two, three, four, five in favour. Against. Against. Because we're carried then. Yes. Thank you very much, Councillors. Thank you, Mark. Hi. See you, John. Cheers. Bear with me.
this one here. Mm -hmm. One there. Oh, I think that used to be my sister's house. Thought I recognised it. Where did you get them from? Oh, yeah, it is. Years ago. Give me, give me the tarot or explain it. <laughs> yeah, that must be years ago. Ooh. Give us detached, you don't give permission to do a rear, but this is a side, isn't it? So it's different. That is quite big. Such a big one. This line is all measured in Here, I wrote side. Oh, right, yeah. The back. yeah, but on the, on the back, sorry, uh, with the back extension, um, people are now, if it's a detached house, which it is, um, they're allowed to go out something like six metres uh, without any planning permission at all. Um, they still need a building rates and they're encouraged by the local authority to uh, submit an application. However, they don't need it. That looks um, like a semi in that side. Sorry. Yeah, I think it is um, six metres. No, I think it is, is yeah. What's it's the roof? Oh, yeah, it's attached to that, yeah. Right, did you just say six metres? Six metres, yeah. Four metres looks a semi. But I think it's, it's, it's um, attached know. by garages. It's a lot, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, a, it's attached by feet. garages. Yes, that's a semi, semi, yeah. semi detached. It's a link. They would they would consider that detached. So yeah. so if it's four meters, it would be within that distance. Yeah. When well, you can put an objection if you want, but the reality of the matter is, um, you'd have to come up with a good reason for it to stop it because under the uh, national planning framework, um, they, that is it. You know, you, they, they can they can do it. Well, the reason you, you can't do it on the front or the side. If you can do it on the back. It's been in the system since the 27th of September and there's no comments or anything. I'll move it, Chair. Yeah. I'll second. That's no objection. But I don't think it's even gone out before we put it back. No. no. Two and a half? Two, three? So I'm going to garage and maintain the garage is sort of garage. Yeah. Yeah. Does this count? I thought. This is my ignorance not yeah, knowing the area very well. Yeah, <laughs> is this being done under permitted development? Because I thought there was no permitted development in Bradley State. No, this is no, a full planning application. Full one. So, no objection oh, proposed by Keith Sutton and Bailey Lane. Here we are, Michael. Have you built that piece? Oh, it's just full. Oh, I wonder what it is. All those in favour? Four. One, two, three, four. Yeah. Another one for Bert's house, rather good court, 
Hargrave Park Road, installation of 11 air conditioning units and change of use from office class B1A to mixed use office class B1A and coffee shop class A3 as defined in town country plan and uses class order 1987 as amended. Mm. This no, this is no, the same. It's the same one. The next one is going to be the same one. The same It is on the back of the the um, new stuff. Because it's linked right. to the yeah. listed yeah. building. So that's what's there at the moment, and that's what they want to put on the back. No. And what the building's on? The one that you just looked that's at. That's the listed building. building. The list. yeah. yeah. The listed building. On the back of it. <laughs> I don't think so. Got a laugh on that. It's time to get a little fat. The 11 air conditioning oh, is that. Like that's the other one. I would imagine that it's more individual. individual. Well, yeah, but it is, mm. yeah. Because but if you, if you use that to actually air condition that building, you'd be putting loads of piping, ducting, yeah. everything through it. Yep. And 11 through, through the walls and everything. You'd ruin it. Yeah, yeah. you would. What does the conservation officer say? Nothing. <laughs> surprise, what? surprise. I, th I think we, we could put some, certainly some comments from what I'm hearing here. Mm. Is that, um, <clears throat> you know, th there's been comments on this building for advertising by the conservation officer. However, uh, the internal uh, um, external changes good. will be necessary to put all this ventilation in. It will ruin the building. Is, um, I, you know, we, we, we believe uh, needs, needs to be ser seriously looked at. And uh, the conservation officer um, has an opinion on that. So this is what's there at the moment. It looks like a server room, doesn't it? That's what they're wanting. Where? Sorry. Do you want the small units in there or is that desks? That's a desk. Oh yeah, that's the that's the coffee shop and I don't know. Where is the coffee shop? I'm a bit disoriented. Top right hand corner. That one. Top right hand corner. Where are those bit more? That's the meeting room. I thought that was the listed building. The meeting where the meeting room is. And then there's a link into the new building, and that's just office space. Yeah, open office. Open office. So that's all the new building behind it, and if you scroll, if Sharon scrolls back the other way, I mm -hmm. thought that was the listed building, because the, if you look at the window arrangement on the front of the plan, well, and the yeah, car this parking. Well, yeah, this is the car parking and the entrance. Yeah, so and then there's air conditioning units. Oh, yeah, there's coffee points. They're, they're, they're actually in, like, like a courtyardy bit there. Like a service yard, yeah. Really, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, because the coffee one unit is the opposite side to where they had the sign mounted. Yeah. Look how thick the walls are as well in that other section compared to the. Yeah. That's what old houses look like. They That's have right. like. <laughs> Two people like a meter. In the summer it used to keep it cool, but in the yeah. winter it used to keep, keep it warm. Now you can put your fist through it. That's yeah, the same as that. I think all we can ask is for a comment to be made by them and uh, to look at it. But why would you put all the ducting and the... Well, yeah, you wouldn't see that app, would you? Because you wouldn't look at the All you see... They would see have to go up and then through the floorboards. <laughs> all you can see, all you will see is that. There's not going to be lots of pipes and things. That is, that is what is yeah, there. Yeah, because all that would go inside. So they're going to have to dig up quite a lot, move quite a lot to be able to do it all. So they're going to be removing parts of the... Inside to be able to put all that, all the piping in that. If that was it, if that was it, I mean, 11 air conditioning units would. I'd be amazed if that's all for that first building. I've got a funny feeling that the building was sort of gutted internally, and then the, you know, so everything that's in the building, all the flooring and stuff, you know, was probably going to be able to take that, and you said the tip wall was up. I don't think it's got. Well, it's not properly. Well, not. I mean, it's not a fully listed building. Locally listed because if it was a fully listed building, you wouldn't need listed buildings. Yeah. You'd have to put in a ah. listed building at 
I don't know on that, but I know that if it is a fully listed building, you have to get permission. Yeah. 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 Great all all they can do inside, great yeah. one, you can't touch at all without permission at all. But this is not actually heritage listed, this no, is locally listed, locally listed, yeah. listed yeah. which is different than yeah. they would yeah. gather, yeah. and they can basically do what they want. I'd be totally. happy to second Brian's proposition. Yeah. So what was the proposition that you're objecting? Well, no, we're just basically saying that we want more. I think, look we, we, I think we need the, con the conservation officer to look at it and to have his, have his view on it, it's, you know. I mean, because it could be that it's not actually going to cause a problem, because where those are, where those are positioned, it's probably not that furniture building or anywhere we well, can see it. Well, it's hidden in the courtyard. So, it's probably, it's probably, it's, it's, it's probably uh, is, and I would think he's, I think he was on, he would be on the job, I think we just actually mm -hmm. mention it, that, you know, has a conservation officer looked at it. Sorry? Just need clarification. What yeah, you know. clarify that the conservation officer's looked at it. There's no comments. No, there there. isn't. There's, there's been in the signage. system since the 10th of October. Yeah. The There's sustainable transport, but um, yeah. there Because it would be nice for them to say you have any comment. Because he's meant to look at the building, so why would we just look at the signage? Yeah. Yeah. We've got a new suburb called Yeast. Yeast. Yes. So. What are you, are you having no objection? Are you making no comment? Are you objecting? What are you, we need, we need a, a res formal response to the formal response, a formal response from, from the officer, the conservation officer to let us know, has he actually looked at it? You know, has he got any concerns? You know, I suppose. Cause we, but we, are you objecting to the application or are you in favour of it? That's what I'm trying to get out. Yes, well, I, can put, I, I haven't got any objections no to the because it, look, it looks as if. It looks as if, yeah. it, it right. looks yeah. as if the so. location of the, the, the units are not so going to detract from the front of the building. So, that the listed building conservation, conservation, officer. conservation officer has no concerns? Yeah. yeah. Um, and we, we, we believe, from what we've seen, uh, that there's no visible changes to the front of the building. There's nothing you can see there, so. So no objection on condition that the listed building slash conservation officer has no concerns mm. regarding well, we'll this we'll application. You, yeah. 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 No objection on condition that the listed mm. building well, conservation yeah. officer yeah. has no concerns. Yeah. Regardless. I don't think we'll as well. Do we have to do it? So we suppose that? I'll propose that. I'll propose that. Yeah. Second that. That was Brian's thing, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, I said, you know, I said, it's not here. Yeah, I think you put the comments on it. Are you seconding it, Mike? Environment, the 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 environment, Sorry, so it was Elaine proposed, Brian seconded. One, it's just two, clarification three, four, that we need. Okay, I'll get the clarification. Yeah, that's all we need to clarify. Yeah, yeah. Was that <coughs> yeah. Yeah. We, we, we could have we could object on the principle of Friday's environment friendly phase, and we were concerned about global warming. Having 11 um, air conditions there is, is bound to actually increase the um, heating oh, to the planet. Yes. And how many trees are there? Major damage. Oh, yeah. Carbon, yes. carbon offset. Yeah. We could mention that. But, uh, yeah. That's not why we're taking it. But it's not. true. I know. Okay. <laughs> but <laughs> the light is on. Well, let's so, let's so council is going environmentally friendly already. Oh, yeah. Hey. Hmm? Stoke the locks, Stoke Gifford, for instance, aren't they? Yeah. Who's doing that? Second. We're state group. Mm. So are we. You might just say we've adopted a policy. Oh, it's a policy we should be saying about it then. <laughs> we don't need to chat too much about it. Yeah, yeah. the softly being adopted. Yeah. No as you said, 11. I mean, Christ, can't you manage with three? Right. <laughs> we don't need fun. Carrying on. The former GB Neuro building, yeah. Old Gloucester Road, Hambrook, erection of front and side extensions, alterations, landscaping and associated works to form a 67 bed dementia nursing home with provision for 10 beds for resident members of staff 
and five beds for patient relatives. You'd be interested to know that this time the travel plan doesn't make any reference to water taxis, which it did last time, if you remember. Yeah. <laughs> The water taxi, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. If, if this actually giving an extra 66 beds, because they already got permission for the other. They got permission for lots of, lots of others, for more, but yeah. they're they stuck at 66. It was, I think, the last one was yeah. 73 mm. plus the 10. Yeah. This one is 66 plus five visitor ones and the 10. So it's actually, I think, two beds less. But what they want to do is to go up to have like an open plan area on the top. Mm -hmm. So I hope that someone, some people have looked at this because there's a hell of a lot of planning applications, planning documents here. Like <laughs> I've worked with the other ones, but I mean, be interesting to see the proposed for plan. So bear with me a minute whilst we're, I'm trying. Yes. <laughs> I must go, it's a really rubbish looking thing. And so. uh, you know ah, I always felt awesome. they needed so to put the front is, of it and everything. So. I know this is it's this top essentially I think it's the top section which is a new bit thrown into the mix. Which is good. It, it's good. Well people need to go get out. Yeah, know, but they would have to well, what happened there is that oh, because, me, they would, they would yeah, because that, uh, somebody with, like, with dementia, um, yeah. Well, if you look at the, the, um, the railing in comparison to the people, yeah, it's very really, high. really high. Yeah. Mm. You'll be quite surprised at what they can do. I'm not suggesting yeah. that otherwise, I'm just saying... Well, we could we could always, say, we can always put a, a, a thing on there. Just want to try it. Uh, health and safety experts from South Australia, so many of them, um, will make sure that this is um, in accordance with. Uh, <laughs> well, I think it's like no, no, yeah. no nursing home worth, a dementia care nursing home worth its salt is going to have anything which actually is going to cause harm to the residents. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. well. <laughs> it's almost like, uh, what do you think, Keith? It's like a breath of fresh air. Well, well, I, I, think it's I always good. remember, as you come down the down road, is it down road? When you come down onto the Babington Road and you're yeah. opposite the um, home that is dead opposite there, they had a fire exit and they had no stairs coming off of it. It was just a door on the side of the building. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you, you stick there on the lights. You're, you're looking right at the building. The rapid exit. Um, yeah, there was no... They, they got the steps oh, there now, but for years, absolutely five years, years, there was nothing. Just a door. So, so that was slow. Yeah, one day, somebody's going to open that door. Actually, how do you get out of here? Yeah, that's right. 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 Yeah, that's point of view for identification and stuff. Had the timber padding along with all the colours, didn't yes, it, as well? Because yeah. mm -hmm. they recognise all the bright colours. Yeah, so it's... Yeah. Um, I just that way back. But generally, the higher yeah. you've high you got in the building, it's like the more um, compass metres you are, really? basically. Yeah. So as you come in, you don't get the screen shouting so much. It's not very good. But the thing is, mm -hmm. you go up, and I'm not teasing, because it's horrible. You know, I've been in these places. Yeah. Yeah. I was in one last week. I really didn't want, you know, you know, I wanted it, you know, this to be in an area where people can come quite easily, you know, it's on a bus route and everything, so people can see their relatives and everything else. I was very unhappy about this down here. But I think they the are more, getting it. They're, the getting, more severe. Right. They're getting it right. I must admit, we spent a lot of time. Brian, the more severe are using the upstairs anyway. So I couldn't imagine this not being governed by all the Officers, oh yeah, you know the health, especially given the history of that building. I think I think what we what we got there is absolutely terrible looking building. Yeah, it was horrible. Uh, so I think you know it always you know, needs to be improved. I think it's good. I think that is what they mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah.
and why the Parish Council believes that these users would be unlikely to have access to any other form of telecommunications, i.e. be significantly less likely to have access to a mobile or landline telephone than the average UK resident. Um, then they said, my initial concern with your point about high footfall is that whilst this area may indeed be busy, and the population density certainly backs that up, this doesn't seem to result in a high use and therefore need of the payphone. However, I'm open to taking into account any reasons why this particular location may have a greater need for a payphone than the usage numbers demonstrate. I can, see, I can see the officer's point, actually, but... Did you mention domestic need glass? Yes. And Ava, Ava well, we said directly impact on local residents. I guess their point is the 56 Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and actually, then, obviously, they have to go by their set criteria, which they <coughs> have to abide to. So what, what she essentially is trying to say to us is, well, can you justify why it's not 356 if it's that high? That's when we did this last time, we agreed with the... We didn't, we don't have a problem with the Foxfield, Foxfield right? because we said it was closer to another payphone. Yeah. And then we had an issue with that one because it wasn't so close to another payphone. <coughs> and then we were thinking about the discussion at the time I'm sure was around thinking people in domestic situations where they want to use a phone yes. when they're not having to you know because they need to get to a phone really quick say like they're in the street well I was thinking more say domestic issues where people have domestic violence problems at home yeah. and they don't, and they don't want, phone don't phone want a record and, of yeah. people making a phone call um, it was thinking about those things wasn't it from the yeah. but, I, but unfortunately I don't think that no, but they that did cut any weight. Didn't they mention another one of things about um, they would keep pay phones in area. I'm not saying we have a high suicide rate, but that was one of their criteria where they were identifying that type of domestic need. And then we were kind of looking at that. Yes, not looking at the criteria as clear cut of suicide, but then kind of evolving that and saying, well, there are situations where people well, they, they have are in serious domestic problems mm -hmm. and yeah, they, they need safety the and security of being able to make. I think I think Ben has <coughs> touched on a lot of things there. I mean, one of one of the things, and, and I think Lane said that as well, because of the um, situation that you have one phone box and then another phone box removed. I mean, this may have only had fifty six calls, so I don't know how many the other one had. But when you get in a situation where you've got nowhere to go and make a phone call, and considering you've got such a lot of people living in our area. And we've got mental illness and all sorts of things happening. We should, you know, perhaps it should be, uh, they should just take out the errors and just leave this one for the time being. I don't know. Based on what, well. you know, what uh, Ben was saying. So I think he said that really well. And there is a situation where people quite often feel desperate and they they need to make a phone call. They don't need, they don't want to go and knock on someone's door and say, can I use your phone? They don't want to ask a friend to use their phone. You know, they want, you know, and. There is a situation where people sometimes want help and they can go to a phone box and actually do that. So and, and, and they and they do actually keep phone boxes in quite rural areas. And why 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 are they keeping them there? I mean there's still quite very few phone calls. And there are phone you know, there's a lot of phone boxes in rural areas. A lot of them have been closed down, but there's some there's some which are still open. I saw one the other day. And there's probably about four or five houses around that area. But but if you, if you look on their, yeah. their um, council criteria for evidence for need for the universal service, is it's, if South Cross Council considers there to be a reasonable need for a payphone if all of the following circumstances apply. So the payphone is a service which is in current use and has been used at least 120 times in the last 12 months, which would equate to at least two instances per week on average, so it doesn't meet that criteria. There is a large enough population of local residents within the payphone's catchment area of 400 metres who may require a payphone service. So it does meet that meet criteria too, which it says about in that document. 
uh, criteria three is there is no other payphone within a 400 meter walk from the payphone under consideration. So there obviously is another one within 400 mm. meters. So it doesn't meet that isn't criteria. Isn't the one in Foxfield Avenue? No. no. It's not. Right. No, it's not. Like, it would be another oh, one. Yeah. There yeah, the poster is so. similar. Um, and then the fourth one is there is a social economic need for a payphone. The telephone box sits within one of South Gloucestershire's priority neighbourhoods which have been identified as, as having higher than average levels of social, economic and housing deprivation. These households are therefore less likely to have landline mobile phone or have the income to pay for these methods of accessing telecommunications, making them more likely to need access to a payphone. So, to, for South Gloss to back the decision to keep the, the telephone box, it has to meet all four criteria, mm -hmm. which is why in the comments and reasons it says it just meets criteria two within Bradley Stoke. Well, the thing is, though, it's not as if South Gloss actually pays for those. People pay for those by using it. What if a child loses their mobile phone mm -hmm. and they can't use the Telephone anywhere, but but obviously South Gloss they, they have to have a set of criteria that they yeah. have to follow. So I I agree I understand why South Gloss have said that on meets criteria two, and if there is a another phone box within four hundred meters, then I would say, well clearly there is because they there it, it hasn't yeah. rejected yeah. it on that end of this document. Yeah. But I would say the only thing I would say against it, if you like, is the objection that we put forward last time. I think. Um, what we were talking about, that domestic need, that's summarised too greatly with just saying a domestic need because that was actually, sort of, we, had a lot of, we had a bigger and deeper meaning to a domestic need. Cause, so that's what they're asking for clarification. Yeah. So I think our domestic need issue was talking, like I just iterated a moment ago, was talking about those situations where people are wanting to access phones, you know, a bit of a phone system without anybody else knowing they're using it for domestic reasons. And that was the that was the domestic, you know, thinking about domestic violence at home, etc. That's what we were coming that was the angle we came yeah. from last time. Yeah. And we were coupling that with saying yes, there are 1,273 residents nearby. So there's a big population there of domestic domestic homes and houses where any one of those people could have a need now or in the future to use right. a service like that and that's I think that's why we were saying yeah. we But they years. they would say they would say that the person could walk four hundred metres to Precisely the next box. So, that's the thing. So that's so, that's yeah. why I'm saying that. So I would say That's think, why they're asking us to clarify. I think our definition of domestic need got lost. Yeah. And I think possibly we didn't give enough consideration no. to there being another phone as close as there is to so it. Domestic need clarified. I I don't know where it is either. There must be not to say criteria. Really or whatever yeah, otherwise they'd say it wouldn't meet criteria three. So yeah, you're perhaps that's the other one that has a little bit of sweat. Oh, yes, by the, uh, the traffic lights. Oh, yeah, I'm sick about that. We did, that's where we were. And then we say it's too far up the road. That's where I ran. Out of the way. Yeah, because I think when you're talking about if a child loses their mobile phone, they can't use it. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
child e. emergency, domestic violence. Yes. Yeah. And needing to use a phone without others potentially knowing that they're, they're reaching out for help. I think this is all very valid, but I'm sure that exactly the same argument would be applied to every single one. Every yeah. single yeah. phone box, every room in the country. Yeah. 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 And need to use the phone to reach out. That is true, but we did, we did apply, especially on the Foxfield Act, yeah. we did apply saying that actually there's a there is a phone box nearer yeah. and it's being used more. Yeah, we could put we could certainly put something. We feel the state of our residents will be diminished by losing this yeah. phone. Yeah.
deal with the matters related to health and safety, what I think. Health and safety, we really need a phone box there. Then I deal with the following financial matters to approve bills and direct debits or payments. We've got that tabled. I propose this is the first um, one which our new member staff has done today, so it's been a learning curve for all of us involved. Mm. We'll get there eventually. Well, it can take up six months to get into the job properly. Well, we must look at this properly because we spent a lot of time doing this, and I think they'd be very unhappy. Then. No, it's fine. You can yeah. do it. I'm happy to do it. But it looks nice and colourful and, <laughs> and things like that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Welcome to the lamp post, which was repaired for two hundred and sixty pounds. Oh, <laughs> uh, the top section, A1 maintenance, and it is the last mm -hmm. item on that section. Eight five six. Um, I, don't, I know the answer to that one. Was it really steam? Repair to damage lamp post in car park, and that included the hire of the cherry picker for access. Which car park is that? Yeah. On page two, yeah. um, in the second batch down, I know it's probably a typo, but uh, allotment funding claim, this is Linda Cornelius OAP Anal Fund. Anal, 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 anal. I know there are a couple of spelling mistakes, but I didn't want to correct uh, Terry because she was very stressed by the time she done it. I thought, I'll just correct there's another one a couple of ways down as well. Room becomes wrong. Why the hell is wrong? Oh, I remember now. I was going to say which, uh, an item was by chair, but never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I don't just remember what it was. Yes, yeah, so there are quite a few, and it's. Uh, uh, I think it's stationary, not stationary. Uh, Anti-glare film. Yeah. But don't worry, I'll tidy it all up. Yeah, it was. Value, valuation. Does that mean you're not stressing the station in the room? Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, we want Darius to move around a bit. <laughs> yeah, I will make all the corrections before it goes in the minutes. Yeah. Oh, there's, there's another one. Spelling corrections. Valutation. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's a valutation increase. Yeah. It's like a salutation increase, isn't it? Elaine proposed. Mm -hmm. Is there a second mm -hmm. for the. Payment, sorry. <laughs> Thank you very much. Very well presented. Next one. Next one. Wait, you're going to go for it first. Fine. Okay. Yes, good. I've got my rosary card. First day, it's on next week. Payment. It's a 20 session. It's a 2,000. Yeah. Yeah. Meeting finished. I can then mention what I was going to say earlier, which I wasn't going to say, but it's not important.